Hello again, I am Blunty, and this pile of parts is for a custom PC build I'm calling the Wreck Rig. That's R-E-C, not W-R-E-C-K, because it's about recording, not wrecking stuff. And that pile of parts is going to become this. Spoiler alert. Born from the common questions I get asked about what kind of rig, what kind of parts are suitable for a PC build for someone who wants to be a YouTube Let's Player or, or a Twitch streamer, etc. Now, broadly speaking, any PC built to be a gaming PC, anything that's powerful enough to be a AAA gaming rig, already has the power you need to be a streaming rig. But the mission here was to build a more affordable, a more budget-minded PC rig specifically designed and targeted at console players who want to uh, do the streaming, YouTubing thing. They just need a PC capable of doing the recording bit because the games are being played elsewhere. Also useful for people who are PC gamers and streamers and stuff, but want to use a secondary rig to take all that load, all that video encoding load, the streaming load, the recording load off their main PC so the performance of their games is not impacted in any way. And a mission like that means I have two core requirements. Power enough to encode live video at very good settings for super clean and smooth results. And secondly, plenty of space to put a buttload of big ass video files. And as a tertiary concern, it of course needs to do its job quietly as to not interfere with live commentary and recording. I had some parts on hand already, but special thanks to sponsors MSI for the motherboard and GPU and Seagate for supplying the mass storage. And I'll be using this very rig, this very build as the basis for an ongoing series of videos about streaming and YouTubing, let's playing and stuff, how to set it up, what your settings should be, the sort of pros and cons of various things like bitrate versus disk space, all that kind of stuff. So if you have any questions about anything to do with YouTube let's playing slash streaming or, you know, anything in that orbit, now is the time to let me know in the down below area so I can uh, address those in the upcoming videos. In today's video though, I wanted to run you through the parts selection and explain why each specific part was chosen for this particular use case. Some specific parts here differ slightly from a few of the suggested items in the shopping list in the video description because, as I said, I already had some handy parts on hand already from previous builds and reviews and stuff, but all the performance critical parts here are the same. So my performance will be your performance if you build to the same specs. And the plan was just to keep the budget under control. I had no specific dollar target. I just wanted to get a solid setup for a good price and without compromising the mission. You can, with some effort and bargain hunting, do better than this price. If you go for secondhand stuff, you can do even better. But I prefer new because you get warranties. And this is a mission critical bit of gear. You need it to keep working. And if something goes wrong, you need a rescue plan, and a warranty is that rescue plan. If you buy second hand, you've got no warranty. If something goes wrong, you just, you've got no option. You have to replace the part, which is potentially a big expense. So, firstly, the CPU. At the more affordable end of the market, the Ryzen 3 1200 gets us right where we need to be. I've already demonstrated in past videos when the CPU first launched that it can do really quite well when it comes to streaming tasks. And those videos were even tougher, as I was also asking the same system to simultaneously run the games while encoding the stream. If you've budget to spare, the Ryzen 5 1400 has the same number of cores, but will double your processing thread count, which can give you some nice extra headroom. The Ryzen 5 and 7 chips further up the chain are also easy upgrade paths down the line, of course, too. So if you ever do find yourself needing more power, swapping out the CPU is easy peasy. The Wraith cooler that comes with the Ryzen 3 1200 is perfectly adequate. It's leagues above the stock coolers Intel use, and it's fairly quiet, even under load. But again, if there's room in your budget, an aftermarket air cooler or even an all-in-one water cooler would be a nice option too. Similarly, the 4-core, four 4-thread four Intel Core i3-8100 costs a bit more and would have also been a decent choice, except for the complete lack of budget-priced motherboards for this new chip family right now. And on that note, the motherboard. I chose the MSI A320M Gaming Pro motherboard. There's a slightly higher priced MSI B350M, which gets you CPU overclocking support, but for a rig like this, that's not really going to make a huge impact. So you may as well save some scratch. In more general terms, for a motherboard, you want an MATX or Micro ATX or ATX motherboard. I've gone MATX to keep things compact and tidy. 
You can also go ITX if you want a super small rig, but in doing so you'll only get one PCIe slot and you'll need that for the GPU. So then you're restricted to an external capture device only and we'll have to use up one more USB port for that. And ITX boards usually have fewer USB connection options to begin with. So the M80X is, in my opinion, the best choice. On the A320M Gaming Pro, we have two memory slots supporting up to 3200 MHz plus DDR4 memory, an M.2 slot, six USB 3.1, two USB 2.0, four SATA 3 slots, gigabit LAN, 7.1 audio, and a three-year MSI warranty. Boiled down, if you're a bit baffled by all those acronyms, it's a budget-priced motherboard with plenty of in-out options, or I.O. options, both for USB and for drives, both of which are important for a streaming rig. Plenty of USB for things like microphones and mixers and webcams, Elgato Stream Deck, which I now find indispensable by the way, I love it, uh, mouse, keyboard, game controller, and SATA ports, so when you inevitably want more hard drive space for all the gigabyte or terabyte hungry video files you'll be creating, you'll have room to expand easily. Two is good. One for the system drive, one for mass storage, and that's where we're starting here. But two extra for future expansion is really nice to know you have. And don't forget, there's also that M.2 slot for an SSD drive. So potentially five discrete drives in total in the system. On the GPU side of things, we've gone latest range for an up-to-date feature set, but I kept it budget-friendly. The MSI GeForce GTX 1050 Aero ITX 2G OC. The Ryzen CPUs don't have any built-in video hardware, so you will need at least something to plug your screen into. And while the GTX 1050 isn't exactly a beast, it does at least give you the option for running modern AAA level titles at 1080p with good settings. And I know I said this rig was more about being a streaming slash recording beast than a gaming rig, but flexibility can't hurt. But if you're looking to scrape down the budget even more, this is one area you can bargain hunt on without any real sacrifice on anything significant when it comes to streaming or recording. You can go the Dirt Basic GT 1030 and still get a current chipset, or you can step back a generation for the 900 series. If you prefer AMD, MSI have a similarly set up Radeon RX 550 Aero ITX OC 2GB, which is cheaper than the GTX 1050, but I personally prefer how NVIDIA do their onboard recording functions a bit better. And in a rig all about that, that's a decision maker. For RAM, you want to aim for 8GB of 2400 DDR4 memory. It's true that Ryzen really benefits from as fast as RAM sticks as you can feed it. Usually, for a Ryzen gaming rig, I'd suggest 3000 or 3200 speed. But once more, for this particular use case, the cheaper 2400 will get the job done, zero worries. I will be using 16 gigabytes of 2400 RAM here, as it's some I happen to have on hand that wasn't used in a previous build project. And if you can stretch the budget to 16 gigabytes worth, I'd do it. If you're going to be doing any serious video editing on this rig, it'll help keep things zippy. But if the budget is a squeeze, eight gigabytes or two sticks of four will do you just fine. For the system drive, a decent SSD is a absolute requirement. Windows 10 slides by so much nicer from an SSD than a mechanical drive. And it's dealer's choice here, really. It's honestly hard to go far wrong as long as you stick with the bigger brands. Size-wise, I'd start at 120 gigabytes, Windows and a range of different programs will be happy in that space. And on the motherboard we've chosen, you can go with the M.2 option, which is how I'd usually go myself. They're fast, small, tidy, zero wires. I really love them. But I just happen to have a 240 gigabyte WD Green on the shelf from a previous project, so I'll be using that here. The WD Green are great value for a system drive. If you'd like to know more about the WD Green versus Blue thing, I have a pretty handy video on that, which demystifies that and some other more general SSC stuff as well. Even more vital for this rig, though, is the choice of hard drive for mass storage, especially if you're recording for YouTube or are recording your live Twitch streams locally for archiving and later editing and upload to YouTube and whatnot. Video files, of course, can be very space hungry. And while for a gaming build, I'd suggest starting at a one terabyte drive for mass storage of your games and apps and stuff here, I'd put the starting blocks at four terabytes. Unless you want to spend a lot of time moving and managing and deleting and copying your video files around, been there, done that, it's very tedious. So trust me, don't skimp here. Four terabytes is your handy starting point. I've been a bit lucky. Seagate came to the party here for me with a Barracuda Pro 6TB, which is pretty much the ideal drive for this job. 
Seagut drives come in a few categories with names like Iron Wolf and Barracuda and Skyhawk. I love their branding team. For this job, you want one of the Barracuda drives. The regular ones will do very nicely, but if you can, the Barracuda Pro can be worth it here. It is no doubt a bigger dent in the budget, but it is a noticeably faster 7200 RPM drive, which, once more, important because you're dealing with big files. Recording will work perfectly on the standard, comparatively slower drive, so don't worry there. It's just the general management and post-production side of things that get helpfully zippier with a faster drive. It's also much nicer if you're also running games from it. Load times will be faster from a 7200 RPM drive, and especially in open world games where they're constantly streaming in new textures to draw the open world around you. GTA V, The Witcher, games like that. And the Barracuda Pro have five year warranties versus two years on the regular one. And Barracuda Pro come with two years of rescue data recovery service, which covers mechanical issues, even accidents. A little peace of mind when you're dealing with things like long gameplay recordings, which aren't very simple to just sort of do a take two on, you know what I mean? So pushing the budget a bit further for a bit of extra peace of mind could be worth it. Of all the components in this build, this is one area I really encourage you to invest properly on. The other hardware does the heavy lifting, yeah, but this component, this is a keystone. I'm going to be looking at a few different HDMI capture card options in a much more focused follow-up video. But for right now, I've slapped in an internally mounted AvaMedia Live Gamer HD2 as, yep, you guessed it, I just happen to have one sitting idle after a recent review I did. I also strongly recommend the Elgato HD60 Pro as it is what I personally use myself in my main rig and I have done since it launched and it is rock solid, beautiful, magnificent. God love the HD60 Pro from Elgato. But yeah, like I said, I'll be looking at the different capture options in their own dedicated video so we can really focus in on it. Stay tuned for that. To power everything, nothing really fancy needed here, so just pick a power supply unit with somewhere around 500 watts capacity, which is, well, more than enough, really, but 500 watt models are great value, and overbuilding slightly on the PSU gets you a little bit of extra efficiency and can help it run quieter and cooler, as you'll not be needing to even come close to maxing out, and it gives you the room you need for future upgrades on the GPU and CPU without having to also upgrade your power supply. I've got a 500 watt B quiet model here. I also like the Corsair and Thermaltake models around this range as well. And finally, another dealer's choice option, the case. I am using a Corsair Carbide Series Air 240. I've had it kicking around for a couple of years now. I've had a couple of different builds in there. So forgive me, it, it looks a bit beat up. But it's a real nice case to work in. It has great airflow and plenty of drive mounting bays for future expansion. I've also given it a splash of yellow spray paint on the air grills, and it looks kind of badass. Wish I'd done that years ago. <laughs> Pretty much every case on the market for M80X or ATX sized motherboards will fit every component in here with loads of room to spare. In the shopping list I put in the video description, I've chosen a simple and very affordable Thermaltake Versa H15. I have not personally built in this specific case, but I have used several Thermaltake cases over the years, and they're built really nicely and are usually pretty easy to build in, so. Shouldn't have any worries. That's pretty much it. I'm not going to show you the whole build process here, but if you're a newbie to DIY PC building, there is a video I did quite recently covering the process in easy to follow steps and in normal person language. The build in that particular video is a much more powerful system, but the part types and the way they go together are all effectively identical anyway. So if you're new to PC building, check out the video. It's going to demystify and simplify a lot of stuff for you. I'll be looking at this and breaking it down in much more useful detail in the next video, but just for proof of concept that this rig does what I built it to do, what you're seeing here is the rec rig chewing through some 1080 30 frames per second and 1080 60 frames per second streaming workloads, both from a Nintendo Switch, an Xbox One X, and even locally running PC games. In every instance, the resulting video was right on spec, so hooray, mission accomplished, job done. So as I said earlier, in the upcoming series of videos, I'll be using this rig to talk about various aspects of, uh, of setting up performance tests and tweaking guides so your streams can look the very best that they possibly can. So if you have any questions or requests about anything in that sort of orbit, now is the time to start slapping your keyboard. Meanwhile, thank you for watching. I am Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.